Today's lesson is working on solving equations. And today we are gonna say, I can solve one step addition and subtraction problems. So we're gonna be focusing on just problems that have addition or just problems that have subtraction today. And when we solve equations, we have to work with additive inverse. So we're trying to make opposites. So thinking back to what we previously learned, what is the opposite of positive two? Well, it's negative two. And when I add opposites together, two plus negative two equals zero. What is the opposite of a negative five? It would be a positive five. If I add negative five plus five, it equals zero. So when we add opposites, opposites add to zero every time. So when we think about adding opposites and we get zero, we have actually a vocabulary word that goes with this. When you, what you add to a number to get zero is called the additive inverse. And so we're gonna talk about what is the additive inverse to make zero. Even though it's the word additive, it can be a positive or a negative number. So our first problem today is asking us to solve a problem using a diagram. So it says X plus eight equals 15. And so when we think about this, I have 15. So I can draw a tape diagram with 15 boxes. All right, so here's my 15 boxes. And then the other side is saying X plus eight. I don't know how big X is. So I'm gonna first show my eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The rest is X. And so this is a problem we probably know. What plus eight equals 15? But I can see here when I look at my tape diagram, because they have to be the same, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes that possess the same space as my X. So X equals seven. However, this is not always realistic to model or diagram all of these problems. And so we can use it algebraically as well. When we solve algebraically, anytime we have a problem, we wanna draw a line through our equal sign dividing our problem into half. So X plus eight equals 15, draw a line through my equal sign. Why we have that line is because anything I do on the left side I have to do on the right side. We're trying to keep it balanced, just like if it was a seesaw. And when I look at this problem, I see it says X plus eight equals 15. I need to get X alone. So that means I need to take that plus eight and use my additive inverse to eliminate it. And I know because of my vocabulary, additive inverse, I'm gonna add the number to make zero to it positive eight because of the plus sign. And what number makes zero? Well, it's negative eight. So I'm gonna combine positive eight and negative eight to make zero. They cancel each other out and I'm left with just an X. But if I do it to the left side, I have to do it on the right side. So I'm gonna once again, subtract eight. And now I just have a math problem to solve. 15 minus eight, it's seven. So I figured out mathematically, X equals seven. We can also model subtraction problems with tape diagrams. So we have F minus 10 equals 13. And this is gonna look a little different. So if I have a tape diagram, here's F, okay? But it says I took away 10. So I would say, here's F, and I need to put 10 in. 
So here's my 10. And then what's left over is F minus the 10 boxes I've taken out of that length. And our problem is saying that F minus 10, so this box that's remaining, is 13 units. So I can make the same length, 13. I have 13 boxes there. And I need to figure out what was the original box F like. So how long was it? So it was all of these 13 and all of these 10. So I had 13 here, 10 here, 13 and 10. F was originally 23 boxes long. Sometimes with subtraction, tape diagrams get a little confusing. And so we can also use the algebraic method. When we solve, we start with that line through our equal sign every time. This time, it says F minus 10. If I'm trying to get F alone, I need to take the minus 10 and eliminate it using my additive inverse. So minus 10 and what number would make zero? Well, I know a negative 10 minus a negative are the same thing and positive 10, when I combine them, they make zero. So I'm left with just F on the left side, but if I do something on the left, I have to do it on the right. I said plus 10, so I have to plus 10 on the other side and 13 plus 10 is 23. I got the same answer, one visually using my tape diagram, one algebraically. And lastly, we have some problems we're gonna do simply algebraically. I'll do the first one and then we'll do the next on our own. I'm going to actually do this one right here, the third problem. 20 equals x plus 9. Like always, we start by drawing the line through the equal sign. And I'm trying to do the additive inverse of that 9, trying to get that 9 to become a 0, because I need to get my x alone. It's on a different side than our other two examples, but the process is the same. So to eliminate positive 9, what makes zero? Well, I'm going to combine it with a negative nine because nine minus nine makes zero and I have just an X on the right side. But if I subtract nine on the right, I also have to subtract nine on the left. So 20 minus nine makes 11, which is my solution. I can always check by taking my 11 and plugging it back into the problem. So evaluating. Does 20 equal 11 plus 9? Well, 11 plus 9 is 20. Yep, it works out. I know I did the problem correctly. Can you go ahead and please solve those other three problems on your own? Pause the video, solve them on your own, and then come back and check your work. If you use the additive inverse correctly, for the first problem, you should have got z equals 68. Second problem, you would have got P equals 29, and the third problem, 18 equals Y.